Imagine waking up in complete darkness, not because the sun hasn't risen, but because your home has never had electricity. Children prepare for school by candlelight or kerosene lamps, risking their health and struggling to read their books in flickering shadows. Families cook over smoky fires, inhale toxic fumes, and risk burns daily, because electric stoves are a dream that doesn't exist in their world. In clinics and health outposts scattered across remote areas, refrigerators meant to preserve life-saving vaccines stand empty and silent. Nurses work by flashlight, delivering babies and dressing wounds in low light, praying their batteries hold out. Internet access is virtually non-existent, cutting off whole villages from educational resources and connection to the outside world. In this world, electricity is not a utility. It's a distant luxury, an invisible line separating those who can dream bigger from those who simply survive. Across the vast landscapes of rural Africa, this is not an occasional inconvenience. It is a daily battle, a life lived on the edge of the modern world. The absence of power stalls progress, holds back potential, and keeps entire generations tethered to poverty. Farmers cannot power irrigation systems, limiting their yields to what the rain decides to offer. Teachers cannot show digital lessons or even charge a simple tablet to enhance learning. Children grow up not only without toys that blink or buzz, but without the basic infrastructure needed to study after dark. Electricity shapes possibility, and its absence shapes limitations. But in the heart of this darkness, a light has emerged. A man with an idea and a mission. His name is Maxwell Chikambutso, and he's not just an inventor, he's a visionary determined to change the trajectory of forgotten communities. His creation, a self-powered generator that does not rely on gasoline, diesel, or the broken promises of national electric grids. Maxwell's generator is unlike any conventional power solution. It runs silently, efficiently, and independently. It harnesses the power of renewable energy, integrating solar, wind, and electromagnetic technologies in a way no one thought possible. It doesn't require frequent maintenance or expensive parts. It's built for rugged conditions and real people. Its design is as brilliant as its function. Portable, durable, and versatile enough to work in a single hut or across an entire village. And the best part, it brings power where none existed before, liberating people from dependence on unstable power grids or harmful fossil fuels. Imagine a small school in northern Malawi suddenly lit up at night for the first time. Not by candles, but by clean electric light. Children gather in classrooms after sunset, no longer limited by the daylight hours, reading books, writing notes, and discovering the world online. A young girl turns on a computer for the first time, her eyes wide as she types her name on the glowing screen. Her dreams are no longer chained to the sun's schedule. She studies whenever inspiration strikes. In a nearby clinic, nurses charge a defibrillator and store vaccines with confidence, knowing the power won't fail mid-treatment. Telemedicine becomes possible, allowing distant doctors to consult on emergency cases through stable internet connections. Small businesses start springing up, barbershops, phone charging kiosks, welding stations, each powered by Maxwell's silent generator. Young entrepreneurs begin to dream, to build, to trade and connect with cities and customers far beyond their village borders. The generator becomes more than a machine, it becomes a gateway to possibility, a symbol of resilience and hope. The innovation didn't arrive through a government truck or foreign aid container. It came from within the continent, from an African mind determined to solve an African challenge. Maxwell did not wait for permission or recognition. He saw a gap and filled it with ingenuity. His generator is built to withstand heat, dust, humidity, and movement because the terrain demands durability. It is easy to set up, requires minimal training, and can be operated by anyone with basic instruction. Its compact form allows it to be transported on motorbikes, donkeys, or even carried by hand into the most remote areas. Villages once lit only by stars now glow gently with LED bulbs powered by Maxwell's invention. School exam scores improve as children study longer and access more resources. Health outcomes improve as clinics stabilize treatments and medicines remain properly stored. Crime rates drop slightly as communities stay lit at night, deterring thieves and creating safer walkways. 
local economies expand as tailors, welders, and small grocers operate longer hours and serve more customers. For many, this generator isn't just a tool, it's liberation from the chains of technological inequality. No longer do communities have to wait for government rollout plans that never reach them. No longer do. Parents worry if their child's asthma nebulizer will work through the night. No longer do dreams get dimmed simply because the light ran out. In the heart of Zambia, a village chief recounts the day his community first received a generator unit. He describes how tears welled in the eyes of elders as they saw lights flick on for the first time in their lives. He recalls children clapping and dancing around the glowing bulbs, their joy louder than any celebration. For decades they had lived in the margins, but that day they stepped into a new chapter. Another story comes from rural Uganda, where a midwife saved a newborn's life with equipment powered by Maxwell's generator. She tells how, for the first time, she didn't fear a blackout in the middle of delivery. The child survived because the power never faltered, and that power came from a box no bigger than a suitcase. In Kenya's arid north, where solar panels often fail under dust buildup and battery storage costs remain high, Maxwell's generator brings consistency. It charges during the day, stores energy efficiently, and distributes it with almost no loss. Its performance has impressed even skeptical engineers, many of whom now believe decentralized energy is Africa's real solution. The generator creates a ripple effect, lighting up homes, transforming schools, modernizing clinics, and activating business hubs. It transforms lives not just by providing power, but by enabling everything that power makes possible. It is a bridge between isolation and inclusion, poverty and prosperity, stagnation and growth. And all of it starts with innovation rooted in understanding, the kind Maxwell has cultivated over years of firsthand experience. He grew up surrounded by darkness, not just the literal kind, but the kind that dims potential and stifles opportunity. He studied patterns, explored materials, experimented endlessly, and eventually cracked the formula. The final device doesn't just produce energy, it produces dignity. It brings back time lost walking to town to charge phones. It brings peace of mind to parents who want a safe environment for their children. It allows communities to plan futures instead of just coping with the present. Energy becomes an equalizer not just for the rich, the urban, or the connected. It flows now to the remote, the rural, the often forgotten. And with every village that lights up, the momentum grows. This isn't a one-off success story, it's a movement in the making. Maxwell's generator is more than a prototype, it's already deployed, already transforming, already inspiring. And as more units roll out, more lives will change. The generator has been tested across countries, climates, and communities. It withstands storm winds, desert heat, and tropical humidity. It powers tools, lights, fans, fridges, radios, and routers. It is silent, no roaring engines or disruptive fumes. It runs clean, no emissions choking the air or poisoning lungs. It is scalable, one unit for a house, multiple units for a school or a health center. Maxwell has designed it to grow with the needs of the user. And its secret isn't just in engineering, it's in empathy. Every feature is shaped by what the people asked for, what they lacked, and what they needed most. It's not innovation for innovation's sake. It's purposeful, practical, and profoundly personal. Where others brought blueprints, Maxwell brought solutions. Where others saw problems, he saw potential. The generator doesn't promise miracles, it delivers results. And in doing so, it rewrites what's possible for millions across rural Africa. It says clearly, you do not have to be forgotten. You do not have to wait for the future. It can start now. And with every click of a switch, a new story begins. In a world dominated by towering power lines and massive utility companies, rural Africa is quietly writing its own energy story. Maxwell's generator has become the pen, and each village it touches adds a new chapter filled with light, life, and limitless potential. In Tanzania, a group of young engineers huddle around the generator, learning not only how to operate it, but how to build the future with it. They reverse engineer its components, sketch designs on chalkboards, and imagine localized adaptations for their terrain and climate. What began as a gift of energy transforms into a culture of innovation, 
as youth become the next generation of cleantech creators. Maxwell never intended to create dependence. He built the generator to awaken autonomy. Each new deployment comes with workshops, toolkits, and mentorship programs, helping locals become technicians, entrepreneurs, and educators. In villages where unemployment once seemed inevitable, repair centers and energy consulting services now employ dozens. Solar lamp vendors expand their offerings with Maxwell-powered battery units. Women who once walked miles to sell handmade crafts can now operate sewing machines and digital point-of-sale devices from their homes. Microeconomies bloom like wildflowers in the sun. Resilient, beautiful, and built from the ground up. In Niger, the story is one of agriculture transformed. Farmers previously at the mercy of erratic rainfall now use electric pumps to irrigate crops with precision. Yields triple in some areas, not because of chemicals or GMOs, but simply because water flows when and where it's needed. Cold storage facilities powered by the generator allow produce to last longer, cutting waste and increasing profit. Markets become more vibrant, trade routes more active, and families more secure. When power arrives, the ecosystem around it begins to flourish. In South Sudan, refugees once stranded in darkness now find relief in electrified camps. Security lights reduce nighttime attacks, and communication centers powered by the generator reconnect families across borders. Health posts stabilize patients through the night, and mobile charging hubs keep people informed, employed, and empowered. Hope flows through wires, switches, and glowing bulbs. In each community, the arrival of Maxwell's generator is greeted like the return of a long-lost friend. The elders bless it, the children crowd around it, and the leaders strategize with it. It becomes a part of daily life, not a luxury device, but a companion in resilience. One mid-sized unit powers 20 homes, one school, a clinic, and three businesses. A larger model supports entire market squares, with alternating current output for heavy-duty machines. Villagers once hesitant now advocate for wider adoption, sharing testimonials with nearby regions. Stories of transformation become as powerful as the technology itself. And this storytelling becomes a vital part of the mission, spreading the word faster than any ad campaign could. From rural podcasts to WhatsApp groups, people share how Maxwell's invention reshaped their routines and recharged their hopes. Videos go viral of women lighting up their first electric stoves, or teenagers watching their favorite film under the stars. The emotional resonance is undeniable. These are not just success stories, they are evidence of dignity restored. Maxwell himself travels across borders, meeting villagers, documenting feedback, and iterating on design. His lab in Zimbabwe is filled not with imported tech, but with salvaged parts, local components, and infinite determination. He listens deeply, adapts rapidly, and refuses to commercialize at the cost of access. His model prioritizes community ownership, not foreign investment. He partners with schools, churches, and youth centers to make distribution equitable and sustainable. In parts of Ethiopia, villagers now co-own the generator through cooperative models. They manage upkeep, schedule usage, and even reinvest earnings into new technology education. No one is left behind, not the elderly, the illiterate, or the disabled. Power brings with it the ability to be seen, to be heard, to participate. And Maxwell's technology ensures that participation isn't limited to the urban elite. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, a group of war orphans finds renewed purpose through a Maxwell-supported training program. They build solar tiles, maintain generators, and lead installation projects in neighboring provinces. These once-forgotten children are now architects of progress. They power their own shelters and those of their neighbors, proudly wearing jumpsuits that read, Tech is our future. Each click of the generator's activation button is more than mechanical. It's a revolution in real time. International NGOs take notice, but instead of trying to replace Maxwell's approach, they amplify it. They fund deployments but defer design decisions to local leaders trained by Maxwell himself. They offer logistic support while allowing the spirit of innovation to remain community-centered. In many places, energy independence becomes a point of pride. Banners hang in village centers. We are powered by ourselves. Children draw their homes with wires running to Maxwell's box. 
this is now their normal. In this normal, hospitals do not cancel surgeries due to power failure. In this normal, students charge laptops and learn coding next to their goats. In this normal, artisans sell handmade jewelry to an online customer in New York, right from their huts. The generator connects two worlds, the resource-rich and the resource-scarce, and shows they can meet as equals. It is a silent ambassador of dignity, quietly restoring belief where skepticism once reigned. In Liberia, a nurse recounts how her solar battery always died halfway through the night, but not Maxwell's unit. She speaks with gratitude, saying she no longer prays for a miracle during emergencies. She flips a switch. In Gambia, an elderly man weeps beside his humming fridge, finally able to store insulin without fearing spoilage. The power of this machine is not in kilowatts, but in kindness. In Ghana, a radio station now broadcasts daily agricultural tips, powered entirely by the generator. Farmers tune in, try new methods, and boost their harvests. Learning becomes living. It is more than empowerment. It is infrastructure born of ingenuity. Energy literacy spreads hand in hand with electrical access. Children not only use power, they understand where it comes from, how it works, and how to grow it. Curriculums evolve to include discussions about sustainable grids and microenergy solutions. This education sparks a generational shift from consumers to creators. Maxwell doesn't just bring technology, he cultivates technologists. In Mozambique, students in dusty classrooms now learn about electromagnetic fields by studying their own generator. They write essays about energy equity and draw diagrams of village-wide power plans. They are not waiting for rescue, they are preparing to lead. The energy divide narrows one community at a time, one spark at a time. And each time the generator's hum begins, a dream somewhere becomes more possible. It hums through rain, wind, drought, and joy. It hums in schools, clinics, churches, and homes. It hums behind marketplaces and beside farms. It hums quietly, faithfully, and powerfully. And in that hum lies the sound of Africa recharging itself. Maxwell continues his mission, not chasing headlines but chasing the next dark village to light. He refuses to patent his technology in a way that locks others out. He believes true power must be shared. He open sources parts of his design, inviting collaboration from engineers and dreamers across the continent. Workshops pop up from Nigeria to Namibia, where tinkerers remix the generator for new applications. Water purification systems, mobile education labs, drone recharging stations, all spun off from the original device. The generator becomes a seed, and from it sprouts a forest of decentralized, people-first solutions. Africa, once painted by the world as needy, now emerges as a cradle of clean tech courage. Because of one man, one idea, and one relentless belief, that no one should live in darkness. No child should ever study by firelight again. No patient should suffer due to a dead machine. No dream should be extinguished because power didn't arrive. Maxwell's generator is not the future. It is the present, alive, running, humming, and healing. And as it spreads across the land, it brings with it something far greater than electricity. It brings the belief that even the most remote, overlooked corner of the world can rise. It brings the conviction that innovation, when born from love and necessity, can outshine anything. It brings the light.